All right, here we go. So on non-farm payroll last week, we talked about the setups going into the non-farm payroll. You can see my outer edge hit right after the non-farm payroll. This is, a this is the indicator that fires an automatic yellow reversal bar when it, when it qualifies. You got to close outside of my outer zone by at least a close, and then you got to close back inside of it. PPI just came out, and we are long right now off of uh, this trade set up, outer edge trade. The strategy's got first two targets off, third target is off now. I got a runner running right now off of that strategy, off this as far as the strategy goes. So, you know, what you want to do is you want to see it close outside. If you're shorting by a close and then see a yellow bar that goes off on your speakers, a yellow trigger entry bar form. This is one of the only strategies I'll let run through news, the outer edge. I do not, and I repeat, I do not let the zone break trader run through news because it's buying the highest, higher, lowest, low. Your fills typically tend to be bad with slippage. Um, I do like to run that during power hour times. So this is the non-farm payroll trade. It was a nice... 23 and three quarters and as low as 2005. So it had a nice big hit. Well, PPI just came in. I said, look for an outer edge trade before it came up. So when price action was here before news came out, I was on the microphone. I said, we're looking for an outer edge trade right now. We need to close outside of this and then a yellow candle will form and close back inside for a buy setup. And that's exactly what happened on the 20 sim Rinko. Right after I talked about it, uh, that's what I was looking for. So the algorithm picked it up and we got a buy set up. Now there's two ways you can do it in the PDF on the members download page. I give you the settings for the 12 Simrenko. So this is the 11212. This is a 12 Simrenko. The difference between a 12 Simrenko and a 20 Simrenko, obviously the bar size is larger on a 20 Simrenko. So whatever Rinko size you trade on the Rinkos that I like to use, that's going to dictate your stop level. So if you trade off of a 12 Simrenko, you know you got to have a minimum of a 12 tick stop. If you trade off of a 20 Simrenko over here, you got to have a minimum of a 20 tick stop because of the Rinko size. So the 12 Simrenko I like, uh, statistically speaking, I showed you the numbers and I showed you uh, all, all trades during my power hour session. Um, and when I say power hour, you know, when you're running a strategy or what have you, it doesn't mean you just have to run these strategies through power hour. I'm talking about statistically speaking, taking every trade for the last 90 days during that 9 to 10 window has statistically been the best. Um, obviously, traders can trade outside that window if they want, like this with news events. It caught the big non-farm payroll push. It just caught the PPI. And so <clears throat> this is the only strategy that I feel can run through news events because it's catching a lower the lowest low or the highest swing high where you don't want to do let's say a zone breakout strategy um, because you're, you're going to get slippage and it's going to create slippage in your fills okay so this you can see we have a runner running on an outer zone that was I projected this before it came out that I know that's how I programmed the algorithm I programmed the algorithm algorithm to show us these outer edge trades when you get a couple candle closes outside of it, at least by one, it's got to close back inside of it. This will alert your speakers on your on your speakers, will go off, and a yellow candle will form. Now, what you can do, another target just hit on this strategy. You can use a strategy with this also. A strategy, we have a strategy that where the indicator plots, this is a 20 Simrico. I have a strategy running on the 12 seam Rico right now. So what you can do is you can, when the yellow bar reverses, you can use it as an indicator or you can use it as a strategy below. The indicator will simply form a yellow candle and it will fire a, uh, a sound on your speakers. So this is running here, four targets off. It's got two targets left on the, on the uh, right, four, forget on this one. Oh, no, this one has the four targets, okay? So the six is the zone break. So um, this has had hit its all targets this morning. Um, you can put the last one out to 1,000 ticks if you want to, and this runner would still be running. Uh, but if we go back 
and we look at this, look at these setups. So this is PPI. This is this was projected before it happened when I started the video. I was looking for this setup. If you go back and replay the start of the video, uh, we were projecting this to come up before it even uh, fired in. Um, so if we go back to these trade setups, let's look at the rhythm of the market, how we look for our setups, and we'll shut this off. So a few days ago, we had a lot of setups. Um, the news came out. We had a failure trade. A failure trade, a yellow candle will form against zone trend. That's called a failure against trend. I like to see those when the oscillator breaks through 100, positive 100, and gets back through a positive 100. That's showing strength. That's a failure setup with overall. With, now, that's against trend because it's a zone trend. The zone is down. Then you go, you change from green to red to green. The trend is up, and these zone levels will form. When it breaks out, a audible alert will come on your speakers. That's a zone break with trend. Another zone break with trend. Zone break with trend. So what we're doing is, then we get a trend change from red to green. Now we're looking for cells. Zone break. We get a failure against trend that fired. That's against zone trend. This is the outer edge we just caught on the CPI, and it caught the high on non-farm payrolls last Friday. Just missed it. Needs at least one candle closed back inside of it, or a yellow bar was formed. We were, we were actually stalking this in the room. I was talking about this, and a lot of traders were. It worked out quite well. It ended up just tanking the market. And then zone break, zone break. Then we get a trend change, red to green, um, and we get this what's called zone break trend failure. What does that mean with trend? It means this oscillator broke 100, but it cut right back through 100, meaning it's very strong. Because if the oscillator went, went below negative 100 and back up, it's just oscillating. But it stopped. It stayed above my 40, my negative 40, which is positive, And then we got a zone breakout. If you see those, they typically follow through really nice. This happened to be a really big zone breakout, 52 and a quarter all the way up to, what, 37 and a quarter. Some traders that trade, the, if you want to trade the zone strategy, will watch for this. You can actually, if you're trading the zone strategy during the day, um, I like when this stops and starts reversing back to the upside into a stronger market. You can actually turn the strategy on waiting for a zone breakout and let the strategy trail you up through. Um, that's how I like to use a zone trader and let it manage your trade. The one thing I want to make traders aware of uh, during 11 to 12.50 is a downtime in the market. The volume is dissipates really big time. So I call this a no trade, uh, a no trade area where we shouldn't really look for setups from 11 to 1250. At 1250, the market likes to pick back up. A lot of volume, the algos like picking back up. Um, so this is where I like to try to avoid these setups um, uh, strategy-wise and also indicator-wise, especially during the 1115 to 1145 window. Um, this 1115 to 45 window um, is a really big dead spot in the market. Um, and then it likes to really pick back up after that from 1250. It likes to get right back into it going into the 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We had a big zone break out here. But look at this zone break failure with trend. You see the oscillator got down below and it reversed right back above 100 into a stronger market. And then the zone break uh, ends up coming in and fire <coughs> firing. Excuse me. <coughs> Fires in. And we get a nice little push up as far as that goes. Uh, same thing over here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have a, um, a retracement, uh, stochastic, and then we come right back up into a zone break, and we get a nice big move up to the upside. All right. So as of right now, this is a trade that I projected for you guys on the microphone before it came up. <coughs> how did I, how did I uh, project this? This is our outer zone right here. We want to see the outer zone come to this outer zone, close back inside of it. Once we close back inside of it, this yellow bar will form, just like the zone breakouts, just like the failure trades. If you're trading this as an indicator, which a lot of you do, um, you use that indicator. Um, when it fires in, that is your trigger or entry, uh, and it goes off on your speakers. If you're using a strategy form, um, that's a strategy entry today off the 12 sim Renko. Uh, it got all four targets off here this morning. You can change your targets, change your Renko sizes, uh, totally up to you. 
you can see the we got um, a very strong market though it kept getting a power up there uh, broke the 100 right back above 100 broke 100 right back above 100 in a strong market and uh, that worked out quite well 